There are more UFO sightings than ever before. Strange lights. Alien life. A UFO. What lies behind this increasing number of reports? What the f*** is that? Four expert UFO investigators are hunting down the truth. Maureen Ellsbury is a respected UFO journalist. I've studied literally thousands of and most have rational explanations. Mike Barra is an experienced aeronautics engineer. Before I believe in flying saucers, I'm going to need hard physical evidence. The other two investigators believe that aliens are already here. Daryl Sims is a private investigator and ex-CIA. I was abducted by aliens. I think they're a force for evil. And Stephen Jones claims to have had contact with extraterrestrials. ETs are walking down the main street right now. In this investigation, multiple reports of alien abduction in Indiana. This is the spot where a craft took you. Yes, right here. And evidence of extraterrestrial surgery. So this seemed to be a medical procedure? It gave that look. Lead to claims that ETs are producing a new alien hybrid race using human DNA. There is an intention on the part of these hybridizing species to take over the planet. Avon, Indiana. Across the state, there's been over 1,500 claims of alien abduction over the past decade. Now, the UFO investigation team is in town to find out if locals really are victims of extraterrestrial kidnapping, and if so, why they are being targeted. So guys, we're here to investigate a pretty compelling abduction case. UFO journalist Maureen Ellsbury has background information on the case. So basically, on March 30th, 2009, Matthew Reed was driving home from the movies when he believes he was abducted. Fast forward an hour and a half, he finds himself outside of his vehicle in the middle of a field two miles away from where he was supposed to be with no recollection of what happened or how he got there. So, case of missing time? And this is what Matthew Reed has to say. The car started to hesitate, and so I'm feathering the gas pedal and trying to figure out what's wrong and then it was I guess like everything just kind of closing in like being put to sleep for surgery it's that and you can almost hear it it's just like Yeesh. this scares me because there's nothing I can do about it I'm completely defenseless based on what I'm hearing here this individual not only needs our help but I'm telling you this stuff is a threat it's a threat to him it's a threat to his family you know, I don't know, this doesn't seem like much to me. It seems like a guy went out with his buddies, went to a movie, tied one on, drove his car into a ditch, wandered around for a while, woke up, you know, maybe half drunk, and, oh, there's my car, and then drives home. Well, that could be, Mike, but first, let's deal with the facts and the evidence that Matthew has. I've actually arranged for us to go meet him right now. Well, let's go. Fantastic. Let's go. The team head out of town to interview Matthew Reed to try to get to the bottom of his claims of lost time and alien abduction. My experience in 2009 changed everything. I don't have a lot of friends anyways. I have a few close friends. And how has it affected my life is how do I approach them and say, you know, hey, Bill, guess what? And, and I try to explain it to them. And then the minute you see that blank look in their face, that relationship is over. All I want is for people to see the evidence the facts and tell me I'm wrong. Well, we've arrived to meet Matthew. Our goal is to try and establish whether his case actually involves any alien activity and rule out any other natural explanations. Hi, Mike Barra. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Hi. Good. Do you mind starting us off with a detailed explanation of sort of what happened to you? Um, Fred and I went to a movie. We left the movie theater. Um, it was a clear evening. I dropped him off, and I pulled out of his driveway and 
turn left, and that's when I saw an orange ball. It shot south, and so I turned south, and it was maybe 50 feet, 75 feet. My vehicle started to shake and shudder, and I noticed that the gauges were just jumping um, to the left, to the right, and I remember feathering the throttle, thinking it was gonna stall. And literally the next thing I remember is being in the motion of getting back into my vehicle, and I had no idea where I was. I noticed I had a little bit of blood here in my mustache portion of it. It was dried up, it was, it was flaky. That's how I knew it was there. How did you feel at that moment? There was a sense of confusion. There was a, a bit of panic. I quickly had to assess where I was. What did you assess, if anything? This was completely out of my realm of control. So did you notice any other marks or uh, any pain about your body? I had noticed I had two puncture wounds in my chest. Did you happen to get your any of these puncture marks looked at by anybody after the incident? After I sent those to my brother, he encouraged me to get a doctor to look at it. And he said he necessarily couldn't explain what they were. Yes, they were there. He did ask if I had recently had any radiation treatment because they kind of resembled a bit of um, bubbly tissue. Is there anything that had happened to the car? Had the, the uh, airbags <clears throat> gone off or anything like you'd been in an accident? The, the airbags didn't go off. There was several thousand dollars worth of damage to my vehicle that was found afterwards. The four-wheel drive relay was burned out. That was unexplained. So all, all that stuff's electrical. There was no collision damage visible, no. visible on the vehicle? None whatsoever. Okay. After I contacted my brother, he had contacted a group that came out that conducted an investigation. They did find trace radiation on my vehicle. If you put a compass on my vehicle, originally when they first came out, if you set it on the hood of the vehicle, the compass would spin. If you walked around the vehicle, the compass would also spin. The first thing that caught my ear was when he talked about the car is very, very heavily magnetized there could possibly be some sort of lightning or thunderstorm involved in this because you can have that kind of thing happen and you can be struck by lightning and it can affect your mind there's no question matthew's story is compelling intriguing fascinating but there's something he doesn't want to remember when he's telling his story i didn't feel comfortable the team take time out from interviewing matt to assess his case Investigator Daryl Sims claims to have had negative abduction experiences, and Matt's evidence disturbs him. Matthew appears to be an abducted and physically violated. And I think there's strong evidence to illustrate his point. No, 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 no. Violation is too strong a word, as usual. Stephen claims to have had contact with aliens and believes they are a force for good. ET contact is a complex thing, and, you know, we've got to dig deeper and get to the facts of this. Well, the blood and puncture marks that he has do follow a pattern that's been reported in other cases of alleged abduction. But clearly, I think there could be natural explanations as well. UFO journalist Maureen Ellsbury is looking for a rational explanation, and so is aeronautics engineer Mike Barra. I got a long way to go before we reach the point where I'm saying that these actually been abducted. The key to this whole thing is going to rest on the physical evidence, and that involves the vehicle, the high radiation around the vehicle that was re recorded originally. So what I want to do is definitely try to rule in or rule out a natural explanation for what happened to him that night. Well, I'll get my Geiger counter, and I'll get out in the field right there where he was abducted, and we'll check it for raised levels of radiation. What I'd like to do, Maureen, is I want to get Matthew out in that car, drive the route of contact, and I want to get back into that 90 minutes of missing time. I'll go with you. Let's do it. Okay. Maureen and Stephen head with Matt to the location where he claims he saw the UFO. This is the first time Matt has returned to the scene since his abduction experience in 2009. What I want to do is take Matt on the exact same journey that he made from the cinema to the point of the abduction. You know, whatever happened is in there. It was recorded. So by getting him to relive the journey, he can relive the experience. So it was at this point here of the roadway that the vehicle started to hesitate, gauges started to go crazy. 
as I was approaching this bend was about where I started feathering the gas pedal, thinking that the vehicle was going to stall, and right here. Right, stop, stop. So it was right at this stage, this is the last moment that you have conscious memory before this time lapse. This is yes. exactly this is the, the spot. exact same spot. How does it feel to be back here? Talking about it, it's eerie. This is the spot where a craft possibly came down and took you. Wow. The UFO investigators are in alien abduction hotspot, Avon, Indiana. Local witness Matthew Reed saw a strange light and experienced 90 minutes of missing time. I had no idea where I was. And woke up in a field with strange marks on his body. I had noticed I had two puncture wounds in my chest. But no recollection of what happened. This was completely out of my realm of control. Now, investigators Stephen and Maureen have taken Matt to the site where he saw the UFO. Something happened in between here and the next location. Yes. What happened? It's the first time he's been back there, and he's starting to recall the events of that night. My memories are being in a craft. Do you, do you remember going into the craft? No. What's your first conscious memory of being in that craft. Just standing in a room, everything was out of focus. Only moments after, there was a triangular type object that was for coming from the ceiling. I could tell it was coming towards my head. And to me, that's where the panic started to set in. So then what happened next, Matthew? I don't remember anything else. When you came back, you had a bloody nose. So that must have happened while you were on board the craft, but you have no memory. Don't have any memory of that. I knew it. Bringing Matt back here has really jogged his memory. It's hard for him to relive. I can understand that. But I do suspect he's got much more to tell. Meanwhile, two miles away, Mike and Daryl are at the site where Matthew woke up after his alleged abduction. Well, this is it. I guess it was this area right here, according to the map. Daryl and I are out here in the field where Matthew says that he found himself after his alleged abduction experience. In fact, we're looking in the area right where his car was found. And uh, there was some radiation tests done by a former police officer who claimed that there was heightened radioactivity in this area. And we're here a few years later with Daryl's sensitive devices trying to pick up whether there's any traces of that radioactivity today. Ex-CIA operative Daryl Sims' Geiger counter is picking up traces of radiation that are higher than the normal background levels. Mike, I've got two spots over here that might have something. Okay, well, over. well, okay, but just because it's radiation doesn't mean it's extraterrestrial, so show me. Let's check it out. Come on over. We'll check these two areas out. I'll show you what I'm saying. It's more than normal background radiation. You can see, it'll go off a great deal. Okay, Daryl, I see that, but you know, raised background radiation levels, magnetic fields going a little bit crazy. That stuff could all have natural explanations. Well, thank you, Mr. Natural Explanation. I think I can prove that this has a perfectly natural if explanation. If you've got a case, make it. All right, we will. Despite Matt's claims of abduction and increased radiation found on his car, aeronautics engineer Mike still believes there is a rational explanation behind Matt's missing time experience. So I'm working on a theory that Matthew was not abducted by aliens. In fact, Matthew's car was struck by lightning, and that can account for pretty much everything he experienced that night. As Mike seeks to prove there's a natural cause behind Matt's missing time, Alien contactee Stephen is in a one-to-one -one with him. It helps to share your story. Now, I just hope that Matt can tell me more about his own experience because it will help him. So, Matt, we've just come from the location where you were taken. Um, how did that make you feel? To be back there it was one road that I have avoided. 
Well, the truth of it is, is it's... 2009 wasn't the first time that I was abducted. My brother and I were abducted in 1967, and their entire family was in 1969. Oh, my God. The UFO investigators are in Avon, Indiana, where witness Matthew Reed claims to have been abducted by aliens and woke up with strange marks on his body. I had noticed I had two puncture wounds in my chest. Returning to the location of the event for the first time jogged his memory. 2009 wasn't the first time that I was abducted. Now he just revealed that his brother Tom has had alien contact too. I was four. What happened? As I'm in the top bunk, I start seeing these flashes of light outside the window. And they got so bright, they were almost penetrating the walls. There was a hatch that went to a crawl space type attic, and the hatch started rattling. And I literally look off the bunk and my brother is gone. It was just like 2009. I fade out and I'm in a craft. And my brother's there. So what you're saying is that it wasn't just you, it was your brother? We just had such a good life. Them. What about your relationship with Tom after this event? We just were very distant. We didn't communicate. The best way to describe it is, you know, growing up on the farm, a horse farm, it was the Norman Rockwell setting that my mom wanted for her children. And this just ripped it away. My contact experience has always been challenging, but on the whole, it's been positive. But that's not the case for Matt. He's having a really tough time. And he's just revealed to me that his brother Tom is also an abductee, and that's a breakthrough. And I think it's going to help us get to the bottom of these abduction cases here in Indiana. Meanwhile, Mike is with Maureen. They are researching Mike's theory that Matt's car was hit by a bolt of lightning and that this caused Matt's missing time experience. There's something like 55 million lightning strikes in the U.S. every year. There's 10,000 in the state of Indiana alone, and it seems to fit everything. For instance, you know, the burned out electronics here in the car. Um, you know, he was out wandering in the field. We don't know if he fell down while he was out there and got cut. There's all kinds of things that could happen because short-term memory loss is definitely something that happens when you get struck by high levels of electrical energy. I really like this theory, but how are we supposed to prove this? Well, I think the first thing we have to do uh, is check the, the Weather Bureau records and find out if there were thunderstorms in the area that night. If there were, I think we've pretty much nailed it. If there weren't, the theory could fall apart at that point, but that's going to be the key thing that, for us to figure out. So I, I should be able to get a detailed report of that, but it might take a couple days. Okay. So in the meantime, I think the first thing I would like to do is I would like to test the memory loss component of this by running an experiment where we run some electrical current around the person, a member of the team. I don't like the smirk that's on your face right now. <laughs> well, I'm kind of wondering if you'd be my guinea pig in this experiment. Uh, how many volts are we talking here? Not that many. Maybe 700,000. All right, I, I, I guess I'm willing to do this. But we will take all the appropriate safety precautions. Don't worry about it. Okay. The following day, investigators Daryl and Stephen head out to meet Matt Reed's brother, Tom. They want to find out more about his alleged abduction and the effect it had on his family. I envisioned this Norman Rockwell upbringing, and it was anything but that. Over the years, we've, we've found a way to deal with it and, and put it on the back burner and block it out, but no matter how hard you try, you just can't do that. You really need to face it and, and hit it head on, and I think at this point in our life, it's time to do that. Investigator Darrell has personal and traumatic first-hand experience of family abduction. The aliens came after me when I was a little boy, and then they got my son. 
They come after families. This is how they operate. Tom, Stephen Jones. Steve, pardon. nice to meet you. Likewise. Well, thanks, Tom, for having us here today so we can talk to you. We believe that you, you had some experiences as, as a young boy. What happened in your events? I do remember laying on a table, and I do remember something coming over me. There were uh, these uh, figures off to the left, which brought my brother next to me. So I saw the two figures. They were standing right next to each other. One turned its head a little bit and swung over towards me. What did you see when he turned and looked at you? Just the face of this thing. It was really, it was really disturbing. Uh, I had never seen anything like that before. Do you have any sense at all that what they were there for? I did get a sense, and so did my brother, that we were there, there was a need from something from us, if that makes sense. Tom's brother, Matt, had strange puncture marks left on his body after the alleged abduction. Daryl wants to know if Tom had any physical marks left on him, too. Thomas, in any of your events, have you ever experienced uh, anything like uh, unusual cuts, scars, missing tissue, anything like that whatsoever that you could not explain? I have uh, what many have referred to as a, a scoop mark on my, my right arm. I don't remember a, a scab or anything. It was just one day it was there. You can actually feel this. A lot of skin missing there. You'd, you'd think you'd kind of notice that if uh, you'd had a big chunk of skin taken out of you like that for that deeply. You would, you would think. Both brothers have revealed that they have physical scars left on them from their alleged abduction experiences. Daryl believes this is more than coincidence. The reason these events happen, in my view, is that the alien, whoever they are, they're looking for certain things, and they intend to do something with it. In my view, both Matt and his brother Tom have been abducted by aliens, and medical procedures have been carried out. The big question for us is why are the ETs doing this to them? As Stephen and Daryl follow up their new leads, aeronautics engineer Mike is setting up an experiment with fellow investigator Maureen Ellsbury. If Matt's car was hit by lightning, then Mike has a theory that could explain Matt's missing time. Yeah, we about ready to go? Not really. He plans to put Maureen Ellsbury into a metal suit, then zap the suit with 700,000 electricity. How close are you actually expecting me to stand next to this thing? About seven feet away. Mike believes that the extremely high voltage flowing around Matt through the body shell of his car during a lightning strike could have affected his memory. So before a Marine gets zapped by 700,000 volts of electricity, I'm going to test her memory. What I'm going to do is show her six objects on a tray, give her 15 seconds to memorize them, and then I'm going to take the tray away so she can't see it anymore. All right, so what's on the plate? Uh, a light bulb, yep. six of hearts, and... You don't know, do you? Uh, okay, good. Give spatula. Me a hint. You got five out of six oh. spatula on there, so that's pretty good. So what's going to happen now is Stephen, my assistant, is going to take you off and he's going to get you suited up for the experiment. So let's go. Maureen is now being placed in a protective metal suit, which should conduct the high voltage safely around her body. Oh, this is terrifying. This should act in the same way that Matt's car would have shielded him from the lethal effects of a direct lightning strike. All right, so when someone accidentally electrocutes himself at home, typically, what's the voltage? Well, a normal house line has 125 to 120 volts on it. This is 700,000, so a bit more. Okay, so we want you to get back as far as possible that way. We'll go ahead and turn the machine on, and then you can walk towards it, and we'll run it to you. If Mike's theory is true, Maureen's memory should be at least temporarily reduced by her proximity to extremely high voltage. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to count down from 10. At 5, I'm going to turn the machine on, and then when I get to 0, if you can even hear me, basically you can start walking toward the machine then, all right? All right, ready? Okay, 10, 9, 8... Seven, six, four, three, two, one. <laughs> oh, God.
The UFO investigators are in Avon, Indiana, where brothers Matt and Tom Reed have both revealed they've been abducted by aliens. This is the spot where a craft took you. Yes. Right here. Both brothers also found mysterious puncture marks on their skin after the event. A lot of skin missing there. I had noticed I had two puncture wounds in my chest. And Matt had an hour and a half of missing time during his experience. What happened? I don't have any memory of that. Now, aeronautics engineer Mike Barra has a theory that Matt's memory loss was caused by a lightning strike. To prove his theory that close proximity to high voltage causes memory loss, Mike has just zapped fellow investigator Maureen Ellsbury with 700,000 volts. Oh, God. You okay? I... Well, I, I can't hear very well. Okay. Walking directly towards that thing is a little bit petrifying, um, not knowing what was going to happen. Um, in my ears, definitely, it was almost deafening. Before the effects wear off, Mike immediately retests Maureen's memory. She has 15 seconds to memorize six objects on a plate. In the memory test before she was zapped, she recalled all but one of the objects. Tell me what was on the second tray. Um, an apple. Uh, six of hearts. Okay. Anything else? Um, to toothbrush. That's right. That's all I got. This time, Maureen only recalled two of the six objects. Okay. Car, necklace, flowers, don't remember those. Okay. Well, so what I think we have is we have some proof that being hit by high voltage electricity can affect your short term memory. So, this is evidence that electricity close to the body can temporarily fry your brain and short your memory out. That could be the reason why Matt has an hour and a half of missing time from that night. The following day, while the team waits for the weather report to confirm if there was a lightning strike the night of Matt Reed's incident, investigators Maureen and Daryl head to meet with Matt's doctor, who examined him shortly after his alleged abduction. Well, this is going to be fairly exciting. Yeah. Huh? yeah, it'll be nice to get some clarification on some of his symptoms. Maureen wants to find out if, in the doctor's opinion, a lightning strike could have caused Matt's missing time. Dr. Mozilla? Hi, Maureen Ellsbury. Nice to meet you. Um, you too. Very good to see you, doctor. Thank you for taking your time with us. So you uh, saw Matthew Reed after his incident, correct? Yes. He asked me to examine him. Would Matthew's symptoms be consistent with, let's say, someone who was hit by a strike of lightning? Oh, maybe a side strike, yes. A uh, direct hit uh, would probably have killed him. Uh, there are very few survivors. Daryl wants to know whether a lightning strike, direct or indirect, caused Matt's physical injuries. I'm really interested in your examination of Matthew and the holes that were found behind his ear and in his chest. What did you find? What do you think about that? Usually with lightning strike, you get evidence of a, a burn mark or an entry area. I did not see that. What I saw was more linear and more consistent with uh, an incision being made. In other words, there was a small evidence of something like a scalpel. So this seemed to be, to you, more of a medical procedure? It gave that look. Dr. Mozillo is unable to explain Matt's strange marks on his body, and they do not support Mike's theory of a lightning strike. Take care. Been a pleasure, Doctor. Thank you so much. The investigators regroup to discuss the case. Oh, Mike got the weather report. Mike is still holding out for a rational explanation, believing that a lightning strike on Matt's car is the cause for his memory loss. Okay, so Mike, you ready for this? There was a storm that night. Told you. Well, but we'll hold on. It appears the closest storm recorded 700 miles south from where he believes he was abducted. 
we now have no good explanation to take to these two guys about what happened to them, not only in the 1960s, but now in current times. We've got nothing. Well, so, except I mean, that, yes, they had contact with an extraterrestrial intelligence. What we possibly may have here is a case of alien harvesting. And by that, I mean the alien takes parts or pieces of skin. Sometimes it's blood, sometimes it's a scoop mark. There may be a bigger problem for them is if this involves alien harvesting in any form, it's not over, not for them. The UFO investigators have failed to find a rational explanation for Matt Reed's memory loss. We now have no good explanation to take to these two guys about what happened to them. Or his puncture marks. The holes that were found in his chest, what do you think about that? What I saw was evidence of something like a scalpel. What we possibly may have here is a case of alien harvesting. Now, Daryl believes the marks found on both brothers after their alleged abductions could have been caused by alien harvesting. Now, harvesting is a term that implies, you know, you're, like when you say harvesting, I think of somebody's harvesting my kidney, you know, you wake up in an ice bath. What are we talking about here in the history of, of ufology? Harvesting is when the alien takes parts or pieces of skin, sometimes it's blood, sometimes it's a scoop mark. So they're taking, what, human body parts, tissue samples? Is that what's going on? They are doing at least that. Some people suggest that there's an involvement of some type of genetic manipulation. On the whole, what this means is that ETs are carrying out certain procedures on human beings to evaluate things. If the Reeds were victims of alien harvesting, Stephen wants to know more about the phenomenon and what implications it has on abduction cases in Indiana and elsewhere. I'm more and more convinced that there's ET harvesting connected with these cases. I have a contact called Timothy Good, and he's an expert in this field. I believe by talking to him, he's going to be able to shed some light on what this is all about and explain why ETs are taking blood and tissue from human beings. So this new case that you've been investigating, is this the one where the young lady was cured of cancer? Yes, absolutely. Author Timothy Good has been investigating cases of abduction and alien harvesting for over 50 years, interviewing hundreds of eyewitnesses, as well as being leaked top secret government information. Now Tim, the case that we're currently working on, two brothers, the Reed brothers, that have had missing time, puncture marks, tissue taken. Do you know of any other cases that are similar? Well, there's a, a case in 2002 involving Chris Augustin, who claims to have had missing time, strange marks, for example. He woke up with a triangular-shaped bruise, as you can see here. And there was also a series of puncture marks in a line here, which are interesting. Just like the Reed case. Those sort of marks, is that pretty typical of what contact experiencers have on their body after an event? Certainly involving abductions. There have been many cases of triangular marks, circular marks, and other types of strange marks which are inexplicable. What other cases do you have that fit this? There's a famous case from 1957, Antonio Villas Boas. Yeah who was abducted, taken on board a craft. Puncture marks were also found on him, where they had perhaps taken blood samples from him, mm -hmm. according to this doctor here. So this is his doctor examining him after the event? There were actually two doctors who examined him in Brazil, and one of them was a friend of mine, a colleague, and uh, he was absolutely convinced this was a genuine case. With regards to all these cases, especially the Reed case, why is this tissue being taken? I would think something to do with DNA because I have been reliably informed by a Washington source that there is a hybridization program in process. A group of aliens plan to produce hybrids, combination of human beings and their own beings. If what I've learned is true, there is an intention on the part of these hybridizing species to take over the planet. Wow.
The UFO investigators have uncovered mounting evidence that aliens could be harvesting human blood and tissue. A lot of skin missing there. Eyewitness accounts in Avon, Indiana. I saw an orange ball right here. Medical evidence of alleged extraterrestrial surgery. So this seemed to be a medical procedure? It gave that look. And now, a revelation that aliens might be using DNA to produce human alien hits. There is a hybridization program in process. And the government knows about it. So this hybrid program that's going on, where is it going on? Because I can't see it. There are huge underground bases under our oceans and uh, underground in, in various, various countries. Do you think it's because this, this race of aliens can't live on this planet? That's what I have been told in Washington. The aliens have apparently created a hybridized species so that they can survive much better on the surface of this planet than hunkered down in their, in their alien bases. So, Tim, is it possible that there are hybrids walking down the streets of this town today? Definitely. Do you think this hybrid program could possibly have benefits for the human race? Could this be the next stage in our evolution? Goodness knows what that could mean. Are we going to have thousands of, of aliens uh, in trying to be in charge of our planet? I don't know. Who knows about it? Does my prime minister know about it? Does the American president know about it? If there was one prime minister, I would say Margaret Thatcher, because she got to know Reagan very well, and Reagan himself had been briefed on the alien situation, and, and I'm quite sure that uh, he would have discussed it with, with Margaret Thatcher. There's no question that uh, a number of people have been very, very well informed. Why do you think certain parties would want to keep this secret? Because it's too shocking. What's shocking about it? What, the fact that there's a race of beings trying to take over this planet? Yeah. I think a lot of people would find that quite disturbing. After speaking with Timothy Good, I realised the experiences of the Reed brothers is not exclusive to them. They are being harvested for DNA, for blood, for tissue, and that is happening to thousands of people all around the world. The ETs are taking this stuff and creating hybrid programs in bases underneath the ground, underneath the water. The scariest thing for me is that People in our governments know about this. This goes right to the top. He said, Tim Good said that Maggie Thatcher knew about this, Ronald Reagan knew about this, and who knows about this now? The next day, the alien investigators head back to meet the Reed brothers to reveal their findings about harvesting and a possible government alien hybrid program. So, guys, I was thinking, quite honestly, that we were going to find out that what had happened to you guys is that you had had periodic lightning strikes that had messed up your memory. but. We also discovered that going back and looking at the weather records, that there's simply no way that there was lightning, especially in the area of Matthew of your incident. So I'm afraid I failed to come up with a rational explanation for what's been happening to you. Also significantly, we talked to your doctor and he confirmed with us that there's no actual medical reason that would have caused this incident in 2009. The fact that your experiences have come again after a gap of apparently 40 odd years, it would suggest that they may still be interested. There is something very, very special about your family that they're interested in. Any ideas what that is? I think it's to do with DNA. I think it is profoundly something to do with the future of humankind. Stephen Jones tells the brothers about the possibility of a human-alien hybrid species. Timothy Good told me that the ETs are using human DNA to produce a hybrid. And that's why they're interested in you. After nearly 40 years, the Reed brothers now have been given some answers as to what could have happened to them. 
Now all of a sudden they're investigating it with like a microscope. It's frightening to see there's actual patterns that's occurring with our family history. All I wanted someone to do was just listen to me and just accept the facts. Because if you look at the facts, then you can't deny it. You can't deny something happened. After gathering evidence from the Reed brothers, their physician, and expert Timothy Good, the UFO investigators sum up the case. Timothy Good told me that the ETs are using human DNA to create hybrids, and the government know all about it. If the alien has come here and is doing a hybridization program, if that was happening, they're not here for our benefit. I don't know. I, I think the DNA portion of this is, is interesting. Uh, but I'm not buying that theory yet. To me, it's nuts. But it does make a certain kind of sense. If you were going to come to the planet of Earth, come all this way, and you couldn't really survive here, the way to survive would be to actually change yourself, physically change your bodies, and adapt to this planet. That's right on the money. No point in washing the skies anymore, guys. With growing claims of alien abduction and new evidence of alleged harvesting in secret extraterrestrial bases, are hybrids walking amongst us right now? Find out next time on Uncovering Aliens.